Canada will hit Russia with more sanctions following what it calls phony referendums by Moscow in Ukraine. Moscow installed officials in the regions are now claiming almost total support among those who took part in the disputed votes on joining Russia. The Prime Minister insists Canada will not recognize those results. This morning I spoke with President Zelensky uh, and uh, emphasized that Canada will never recognize the phony referendums uh, that he, that uh, Vladimir Putin uh, put forward in eastern uh, Ukraine. So what will Ukraine do next? Igor Zhovka is the chief diplomatic advisor to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. He's in Kyiv. Hi, Mr. Zhovka. Good to see you again. Good to see you. I wanted to ask first on the subject of potential annexation. Do you anticipate that Putin will make some sort of declaration of annexation? And what do you think motivates him to do so? Well, you know, they already announced uh, the results, the so-called results of Shem referendum. Uh, that was the first step, uh, which was originally the part of the bigger plan. So I don't want when and if and what uh, Putin will announce, but most likely we can anticipate he will not stop on this. So that's why it's very important to have the general uh, reaction of all the leaders of the international community and to have this preventive reaction on these uh, uh, planned uh, uh, steps. And definitely we'll really appreciate that already now all the world leaders, including the Prime Minister of Canada, uh, condemned uh, the uh, conduct of these sham referendums and uh, told very clearly that they will never recognize any results of any of those referendums. Yeah, you use the word sham there, and that is the word that the go government here, the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister are using. We've heard a number of world leaders say the same thing. Uh, ultimately, do you think that makes a difference and why? Well, for us, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, those results which are fake, which were already, I know, pre-inscribed, I think, in, in, in those ballots or whatever they call them. So uh, if you ask me whether it changes anything for Ukraine, for armed forces of Ukraine, definitely not. Uh, we will definitely strive uh, for the liberation of all the Ukrainian territories uh, and armed forces will definitely control the counteroffense uh, they are already successfully doing now. And definitely what we hear from the world leaders it will not change anything for the world because the world will will, will continue rendering a support uh, to Ukraine, be it a military support, be it a financial support, be it a support uh, by the means of sanctions. And definitely uh, each and every leader, I think, each and every civilized leader do, do already believe that Ukraine will definitely win. I listened to President Zelensky's address to the United Nations in which he very specifically asked countries that so far are not barring the entry of Russians to do so, among a host of other things. I'm wondering if in his conversation with the prime minister of this country, which took place, my understanding is, uh, today, if that same message is reiterated, would, would Ukraine like Canada to take those additional steps? Well, we, we, my, my president had several discussions today with the, four, uh, with the foreign leaders, including your prime minister, and definitely uh, the conversation was in the course uh, of yesterday's speech of my president uh, during the United Nations uh, Security Council meeting. Definitely, we would need an immediate response from the world leaders on uh, the uh, last actions of uh, uh, Russia. Uh, again, uh, the support should be very strict and clear. If Russia will continue to do the, the, the steps uh, that they are planning, mm, there, there can be no longer contacts uh, with leadership in Russia in this regard. If Russia continues and the Russia, if Russian president acknowledges the result of the referendum, definitely we should uh, ex ex exert more sanctions and then new sanctions, different sanctions, uh, more stronger sanctions comparing to the level at which we are having now, more heavier military support, more heavier financial support, and definitely the security guarantees, collective security guarantees should, should be rendered to Ukraine. Am I correct in interpreting what you're saying? If Russia does what it's doing this week and it declares the, you know, the outcome of these sham referendums, these so-called referendums, and then also makes a declaration of annexation, what you and, and, and President Zelensky would like to see is an escalation of response from a country like Canada or its allies? 
Definitely and definitely, and this time we should not repeat mistakes uh, of 2014, when uh, they also had the sham referendum in the Crimea, and then those uh, results of those the sham referendum made possible for Russia to start to 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 have an attempt of annexation of the Crimea. This time the reaction should be preemptive, preventive, rather than reactive, and that's what my president is asking from each and every foreign leader, including Prime Minister Trudeau. And what is your impression or, or what has the response from the prime minister in this country? Obviously, I know you're having many conversations. I'm asking just because it's a Canadian audience watching. Uh, do you anticipate that, that Canada will comply with that request? Definitely, definitely. That's what we heard from your prime minister today. He once again reiterated his, his, his condemnation of this sham referendum and definitely he uh, promised that uh, Canada will be watching carefully what is going on and will definitely will be in line with the G7 countries as well as with the rest of the uh, civilized world in order to counteract uh, those actions of Russia. And just finally, uh, Mr. Jovka, you, you are the chief diplomatic advisor to President Zelensky. Given what's happening this week specifically, is there any possibility of uh, diplomatic discussions uh, taking place? Or, or do you think that that essentially the war will be decided uh, th through battle on the battlefield, so-called battlefield? Like, is the road to diplomacy done, given what's happening right now? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, definitely, uh, uh, my immediate answer is that the only diplomatic talks, if you mean the talks between Ukraine and Russia, can only take place now on the battlefield. But look, uh, I mean, if, if, if President of Russia is doing what he's doing now, uh, what uh, negotiations can be held? Because my president was very clear, I mean, uh, holding uh, these referendums would mean impossibility of holding uh, any diplomatic negotiations. Uh, if Putin really wanted uh, to have uh, the real result of negotiations, definitely he would not have undertaken those steps with a sham referendum. So I think this is a clear answer to your question. Yeah, very much so. Thank you, Mr. Jovka. I appreciate your time very much as always. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.